So I got to play the demo for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which was very exciting and very interesting. Just so you know, I will be mentioning spoilers about the original Final Fantasy compilation and the remake, just in case you don't want to hear those, you've been warned. I love the original Final Fantasy VII so much. So good! Uh... <laughs> I'd actually just happened to replay Final Fantasy VII Remake just before I got to play the demo, so that worked out quite well. I'm not going to break the demo down to every last detail. I just want to talk about my experience with it and talk about things that stuck out to me. The demo was split into two sections. The first one was the fated Mount Nebel mission, which is a part of the Nibelheim flashback from the original, so not all of it. It begins in the Nibelheim caves and ends with a familiar boss fight. And the second section was the open wilds of Junon, where you arrive in an open world area around Junon and then get to progress through a small part of the Junon storyline from the original game. Each section was about 25-30 minutes, so I've played for a total of an hour. Everything I'm going to talk about is based on the demo. Things can change. Also, by the way, this is James's footage. I wasn't able to capture my own footage, so I am using his. A Mako Spring. It's beautiful. Yeah, but if we keep using Mako to power our homes, springs like this will disappear, right? What are you talking about? Who told you that? My dad. And the mayor, if you must know. Except the planet's huge. Mako will never run out, right? Naturally formed materia. And look at the size of it. Astounding. For the Mako energy to condense into something like this, it must have taken an eternity. The Nibelheim section throws you straight into a pretty linear segment with Sephiroth in your party. You've got Tifa in the cowgirl outfit. This is the one that I played first, and it was definitely an interesting place to start. Straight off the bat, I do not think that Sephiroth should be controllable. I just think it does a disservice to his character because he can't possibly be as powerful as he should be if you're playing as him. Of course, we're thrown in partway through the flashback, so presumably you'll be fighting the green dragon boss before this in the full game. But either way, I just feel like they make him look a lot weaker here than he should be. It's a missed opportunity to show us how powerful he is in game terms, like they did in the original. What? What is going on? Like, we know what those numbers mean. He wipes out entire waves of enemies in one go, and Cloud constantly dying. It just puts things in perspective. Compared to this... Separate. It just doesn't feel the same. Of course, in the full game, we might see him take down the green dragon in just two hits before this, but then the next moment he can only do 139 damage to a bug. Really? Anyway, you jump your way through the caves. Yes, you can jump freely now. Also, there's an actual climbing system which you have control over, which isn't perfect, but I hope they'll be able to get it polished before release. I just found it can be like a little bit finicky, like not super responsive. I mean, it is just a demo. Tifa, no! Then you got what I thought was an Uncharted style move the box to get up to the ledge puzzle, but it was somehow easier. You just kind of move this thing about and it gets rid of the Mako. No, I do like that they're adding stuff like this. Overall, this whole section has felt a bit more engaging than a lot of remakes quests. There seems to be more places to explore, more things to find and interact with. I like the freedom of being able to jump where you want and be in control of where you climb. Hopefully, the introduction of this box moving mechanic will make for some more opportunities to engage us a bit more. I would really like to see a proper puzzle element added to the game. Wait. Huh? What? <gasps> Get back. <sighs> this way. You 
said you wanted to be a hero. Wish I had. <laughs> then we encountered the Materia Guardian, also known as the Materia Keeper from the original. What's he doing here? Are you? At this point, I'm kind of just focusing more so on the story, so I thought I would just cut together some of the sort of main moments in this fight, and then we can talk about the gameplay a little bit later. On me. Done. Sephiroth. Take it from here. This whole demo has basically just been one big wink at the camera. As we see Cloud acting like Zack, doing his mannerisms nice and work. saying stuff he'd say. Like, they may as well have just called him a puff. You're practically panting. I'm excited. <laughs> Such a puppy. city they're headed to is that Junar Shinra territory come on so at this point we actually get a little bit of information about Fort Condor from the one and only Oracle of Knowledge Red 13 but there's no audio because of technical issues but don't worry I will voice it for you I got this where did that bird even come from you think there's a story about a great condor said to roost on an island's abandoned reactor. Though there's no longer any way to reach the isle, or at least none that I'm aware of. <clears throat> well, if Red doesn't know, then I guess we're fucked! One moment. Hmm? Welcome to Under Junon, our sunless oasis. My name is Rhonda. I'm the mayor and sheriff around these parts. to boot, huh? That's another half a million on top. <gasps> half a million? <laughs> Down here. 
here, though. We know when to turn a blind eye. Consider our lips sealed. Sorry, but I call bullshit. Well, I don't think you would if you knew even half of what my town's been through. I really like how Jinan mirrors Midgar. The people of Jinan and the people of Midgar share the same struggle with Shinra, both places divided into two levels because of Shinra. I don't think this parallel was as clear in the original game as it is here, and I do like how they're making it more obvious here. It's Priscilla! She's a bit more grown up than she is in the original, which might be for the best. I don't actually have footage of this, but I did go into one of the shops here as Priscilla stood outside screaming for help. Quickly, okay. please! And I was just so surprised by how densely packed it was. It was really detailed. Okay, so this is what really surprised me. This is how we meet Yuffie? At first I was confused by why she was acting so helpless, but then I realized she's motion sick, I think. It looks like Yuffie already knows Priscilla. I think they might be a similar age too, so I guess maybe they're friends. The gang goes on to defeat the Terror of the Deep, landing the final blow by jumping on the dolphin. I have to wonder though, what on earth are they going to do with Yuffie in this game? He was following intermission, and now the gang has even saved her. I cannot really see this version of Yuffie stealing the materia and taking off. I'm definitely interested to see where her story goes, because it will surely differ a lot from the original. Okay, I already said I don't really like the concept of playing as Sephiroth, but hey, one of his abilities is the move he used to kill Aerith, so I guess that's pretty cool. Or scary? Or traumatic? Combat is definitely improved with the addition of synergized attacks. This is honestly a sick addition, very much like Sonnen and Yuffie gameplay from Intermission. Now this is James's footage, but I will hear no negativity about the absolute mess that this was. Because the exact same thing happened to me. <laughs> I really think I just needed more time to understand how this worked, but honestly, I'm still not too sure. Now we have a successful synergized attack, finally. This is Void Chatter. There is some new materia, and what really stood out to me is the introduction to combined materia. So in the demo you can pick up a combined wind and lightning materia. I don't know if we can, but hopefully you can combine them yourself and make your own combinations. Another thing I love is the perfect block. Again, taken from intermission, if you block at the right time, you can actually take no damage at all from the attack. I love being rewarded for a well-timed block, so I'm really happy about this. We got Red Combat, it's looking pretty cool, and it feels powerful, which I really like. He's got this thing called Vengeance Mode. Feel free to pause and read. I'll be honest, I really didn't get it. Still don't. They only let us use preset party combinations, and I was 
super disappointed that you wouldn't be able to fully choose your own party. But it turns out I just can't read! Because I now know this isn't the case. It should be fully customizable in the full game. So that's a relief. You can also switch your party anytime outside of combat. You don't need to be at a save point. You don't need the PHS. Not gonna lie, I like the charm of the PHS, but it's actually quite nice being able to change your party so easily and quickly because it'll give you a chance to really utilize party member strengths and try out different characters and combinations that you might not usually go for because it's so low stakes, you can switch them out constantly. Also reminding you that everyone is there and I think that's lovely. What's a really cool detail as well is that even when in battle, the members not in your current party are actually still present, albeit off to the corner, but you can see them in fighting stands and even shouting battle quotes. Again, making it feel like everyone really is there together. Downside? I do feel like we might be missing out on seeing the party members walk into and out of cloud in such good graphics. Okay, so here's a little look at the map. It's definitely big. I think what they're doing, rather than a full open world, is having designated open areas, which I do think is for the best, so they can focus on making these areas as densely packed and detailed and full of life as possible. Although, at least in the demo, there was not a lot to do. It really reminded me of Final Fantasy XV, actually. The only attractions were to fight groups of enemies and do little challenges within those fights each time. As narrated by the worst addition to the game, my. During these fights, there's this weird fucking voice called Mei that narrates every time you get into a battle and it tells you about the enemies and please stop. I hope you can turn this off in the main game. Dude, the second I saw Red 13, on a chocobo. I could not contain my laughter. Having five party members, all on chocobos no less, is kind of chaotic, but I'm loving it, honestly. It's a fun feeling having everyone with you. It feels kind of weird actually, but in like a good way. I think the chocobo music may be glitched? Because for ages I was convinced there just was no chocobo music. Then I was like, oh they play a fanfare chocobo thing. But that's it. But then also I've seen footage where they do just play chocobo music. I'm so confused. <laughs> Bottom line, even when it does play the full chocobo theme, it is not super exciting. Cute, but nothing too special. And you'll just have to take my word for that. We have crafting, which I was not expecting. Didn't really do any of this myself, but it is a thing you can do apparently. Now this is great. <laughs> the way you unlock fast travel points is by following these little chocobo chicks. Okay, what is he doing? Why is he just turned around and gone the other way? What the fuck? Anyway, so he just did it again. James? He found it by accident. He didn't even follow a chocobo to it. So. By lifting up a little bus stop looking sign, you unlock a fast travel point, and then, and only then, do you get to give his little head a pat. This is genuinely great. I love that you're rewarded for doing this little task, and that you physically cannot pat this little guy's head unless you do it. It's very motivating, if you are a me. You can then rest here using cushions, which can be crafted. So presumably there are going to be some side quests, and if they're good, then this won't be half bad. You got a little chocobo farm with a little chocobo shop where you can buy your little chocobo bits and pieces for your little chocobo. I only just noticed this, but it's called the Choco Boutique. <laughs> that is genius. Also only just seeing, you can change the color sense too. Ooh, this is super cute. Guess what color I will be making everything. I can only imagine how many little outfits may exist. I hope many. I also noticed that Many of the synergy abilities involve throwing other party members at the enemy. <laughs> oh, what's this? Stamp? But I thought he was a terrier. Final thoughts. Honestly, I think that I will have a lot of fun with this game. I am excited to play it. And if you want to watch me play it, I'll stream it on Twitch if you want to follow me there. I think they've really in just improved on the combat. The combat is fun and interesting and it looks cool. I also think they're going to be trying to cut down on filler compared to Remake because now that they've got an open world, hopefully they will be putting lots of side quests for all of the additional content that they want to add and potentially that will mean the main story can be pretty streamlined, which I am always a fan of. I don't absolutely love the direction of the remake. I feel like there are a lot of changes being made that 
from me take away some of the reasons I love the original so much. It will be an experience. There will be things to discuss, which is always fun. And if you want to watch that playthrough, it will be streamed on Twitch. I will probably end up putting some videos up on here as well um, to summarize that experience. I've never made a video this style before. I'm extremely uncomfortable and awkward in front of the camera. It's so much harder than streaming. Let me know what you think about the demos. And thank you so much for watching.